All right, so it's just hit that 10 o'clock hour for those of you guys in Arizona. We're going to get started. For those of you guys on the East Coast, thank you for joining us. I know it's uh, right about that lunchtime for you. And for those of you in California, also thank you for coming in. I know it's a little bit early. So we're going to get started with today's 2018 What's New webinar session. So today we're primarily going to be focusing on what's new content for SOLIDWORKS 2018. Now this is the first of a three-part uh, series. We'll be doing uh, one-hour sessions uh, today, next week, and then the following Tuesday. So for the next three Tuesdays, starting today, we'll be going through what's new content for one hour each day with new content presented each week. So if you're interested in learning all there is to know about SOLIDWORKS 2018, please feel free to join us in any of these sessions, all right? All right, so getting started, if you guys have any questions that come up during the presentation, please use the webinar interface on the right-hand side of your screen there. There should be a chat option for questions. Anything you type in there will get pinged over to me, and I will try to address all questions at the end of the session today. Uh, additionally, if you have any audio issues, please use that chat interface. Let me know so that I can try and get those results for you guys before, uh, before we continue on to the next slides, okay? All right, so with that, um, I'm... I'm guessing that everyone was able to hear me due to the, uh, the hand raising session that we just did there. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by talking a little bit about what's changed for SOLIDWORKS version 2018. So the first change that I wanna address is what you'll notice with SOLIDWORKS 2018 is once you've installed it, in the top right hand corner of your screen, you actually see that there's a little man. <clears throat> there's an icon for a man. Um, selecting this icon will actually prompt you to be able to log in uh, with your SOLIDWORKS user credentials. What this login does is it actually gives you access to your My SOLIDWORKS account and also gives you quick access to your customer portal. But the best and greatest thing about this is it allows you to actually synchronize all of your user settings. So all those complicated settings you have within SOLIDWORKS will actually be stored in your online account so that they can be accessed from any device. So let's go ahead and just quickly jump over to SOLIDWORKS. I'll show you where that's at. Top right hand side of your screen, you guys all see this little blue guy. It's blue once you've logged in. Before that, it stays white. Once you've logged in, you'll be able to access your My SOLIDWORKS uh, account. You'll also be able to access your customer portal account. So if you need to get to your knowledge base, any tech support, that kind of stuff. Two really great resources. Additionally, it is backing up all of these complicated tools options, you know, everything that you have to go in and change every single year, it's taking care of that for you by logging into here and saving that information. Now, this little guy also gives us access to something new this year called the admin portal. So the admin portal is actually uh, a way of monitoring your licenses and being able to adjust your licenses for something new called act or online licensing. So what online licensing is for each of you guys that have standalone licenses um, and need to use more than a singular computer to access that license, you can actually convert your license over from a machine activation license to an online license. So using that little guy signing in, clicking on MySolidWorks, uh, MySolidWorks.com, going to the admin portal, you'll be able to select your license and convert it over to an online license. What that'll allow you to do is every time you log into a computer, open up a SolidWorks session, use that little guy to log in, it'll actually use your license to activate it versus forcing you to uh, activate or deactivate your pre-existing licenses or your other computers on the network. Uh, for those of you guys that do travel a little bit with laptops as well, if you convert your license over to an online license, um, you do have an offline mode where you can borrow the license for a set duration of time. Now, if you need to, you do have the ability of toggling this back and forth between online and machine activation at will, basically as many times as you need to in order to meet whatever your daily needs are. But the real goal here is to give you access to SOLIDWORKS on your license without forcing you to do the activate, reactivate, um, the deactivation process, all of that stuff that's in, that entails uh, moving your license back and forth from one computer to another. Now, for those of you guys that are not familiar with this process yet, you'll be able to access it by, again, clicking on the guy up here, go to mysolidworks.com, and once it loads up in the top right-hand corner, if you right-click there, you can click on Admin Portal. Inside your admin portal, you'll be able to select each of your individual licenses and set them to whatever your desired usage is.
All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next part. We're going to continue talking a little bit about user experience and what's changed this year. So InstallWorks version 2018, the first thing you'll notice once you open the software, other than the little guy in the top right-hand corner, is there's actually a new splash screen, a new welcome screen that opens up for us. Part of that welcome screen will give us access to different resources so we can learn more about SolidWorks and see our recent projects. There's also an assembly open progress indicator. So as we open up new files, uh, assemblies, parts, anything like that, we'll actually see how long it's taking those models to open, and we'll get a performance evaluation based off of that information. Then I'll show you some new user interface stuff in assemblies as far as top-level transparency, color-coded folders, and I'll even explain what's going on with new mouse gestures. So let's go ahead and jump over to SolidWorks and talk a little bit about everything that's going on with the new user experience. So first and foremost, inside of SolidWorks, when you launch SolidWorks initially, you will be prompted with this new home screen. This home screen is designed to make things a little bit more accessible to you. So you have quick access to your uh, default parts, assemblies, and drawings templates. For those of you that are using the advanced options, you can simply click the advanced button and it will still open up the same old advanced uh, template information. On the home screen, we'll also be able to see all of the recent documents that we've recently worked on any folders we've worked in, and access to different resources as far as what's new content, my SolidWorks, the forms, your local user groups, and getting support. You also have access to uh, different content in your SolidWorks license to help you learn how to use the software a little bit faster, better, make your life a little bit easier. So there are tutorials built into the software, but this just gives you easy access to finding those, as well as for those of you interested, the certification process. And finally, the new splash screen will also give you access to any alerts that SolidWorks is sending out. So you'll be able to see any issues that might uh, interest you or might cause daily problems for you, so such as scheduled maintenance or when new software releases are coming out. Now, a new function for SolidWorks 2018 also is once I select a model, uh, if it takes any load time, what you actually get prompted with is as the model's opening up, you'll actually get this uh, screen at the top that's going to show you what's opening, how long it's taking, and what the last uh, recorded time it took to open that file was. So as it opens up, you'll be able to see if you're performing better or worse than what it did in the past. As it runs through these iterations, if it finds a problem, it'll prompt you with a performance evaluation to figure out what's going on with the model. Why is it taking significantly longer to open or close than it did the last time? And then once it concludes, we'll have full access to the model like we would expect. Now there is some new functionality inside the SolidWorks visualization as well. So for those of you guys that have used assembly visualization in the past, you all now have access to this to get color-coded parts. So as we sort our parts, we'll be able to look based off of uh, different properties. So in this case, if we wanted to look at the mass of model, or if we wanted to kick this thing over and change this from mass to something like, say, uh, graphic triangles. So graphic triangles are uh, how many triangles make up the individual model pieces, and then it will color code them based off of the number of graphic triangles that each piece of the model represents, or how much, uh, how intense it is for your actual computer. So you'll be able to see everything that's, uh, in my case, everything that's very difficult to render is a dark blue, and everything that's very easy to render is a light or is a red color. So the blue ones are the ones that are most difficult for the, salt, the machine to handle. Some other new functionality as far as 2018 is concerned for user experience. In case you ever need to go into a top-level assembly and actually make the entire assembly transparent, versus trying to dig through this, there's now actually a new command in the right-click menu at the top of the assembly feature to convert an assembly to a top-level transparency. Toggling this will make every component in the assembly transparent at the parent level or at the assembly level. This can be easily be toggled by accessing the same option and just toggling it off. Another cool new feature that was added for version 2018 is for those of you guys that have uh, used or like the fact that you can use folders inside your SOLIDWORKS assemblies, there's been updates to how these uh, folders render when different types of models are captured inside of it. What I mean by that is for components or for uh, folders that actually have parts that are uh, 
uh, hidden, they might be transparent, they might be suppressed, you'll actually see the folder will update based off of that information. So if we go ahead and access this kitchen folder, you can see everything that's in the kitchen folder here selected in blue. If I was to take an individual one of these components and hide it, we'll do suppression. You actually see the folder will update with that suppression information, so it's as gray. And when we hide something, then we'll get the updated between the white folder, the gray folder, and then something at a top level will have the white, the gray, and the blue. So we're showing hidden components, suppressed components, and visible components inside of each one of these folders. These folders can tear down as much as need be. So as we look in the kitchen, you'll even see under the sink cooler that one part is suppressed, one part is hidden. But under the kitchen folder, we have a number of parts that are still shown. While some parts are hidden, some parts are suppressed. So it's just a quick, easy way to find where your parts are hidden and where they're uh, suppressed inside of the folder structure instead of trying to dig through each one individually. Now, to make your life easier with SolidWorks 2018, SolidWorks has also increased the number of uh, mouse gestures that can be uh, customize on site of your SOLIDWORKS instance. So for those of you that use mouse gestures, you can now create up to 12 gestures inside of your, your mouse gesture commands and be able to control each one of these things. Previously, we were limited to eight or four, depending on your operating system and your uh, version of SOLIDWORKS. Another great user enhancement, for those of you guys that have used Pack and Go support at any or Pack and Go at any point in time, uh, Pack and Go now actually has the ability of inserting or removing suppressed components from your assemblies. So as we access the uh, Pack and Go command here, you'll notice that there's a new checkbox right at the top here for include suppressed components. Checking or unchecking this will remove or add suppressed components to your Pack and Go file output. And now, for one of the greatest commands I think that was introduced as part of the SolidWorks 2018 version, there's a new option for selections. So as we do the selection dialog, there's a new option for select over geometry. So what does this mean? Select over geometry is something that can be used when we're trying to grab an object using the drag, and, uh, the drag marquee tool. So if we tried to do it while we had a model that was placed behind our object in the past, as we select and try and drag and drop, all we end up doing is actually selecting the object in the background. So this new option to select over geometry will allow me to do that selection, drag over it without selecting the background object. Now for those of you that are hotkey uh, or more uh, more interested in using hotkeys, this is defaulted to a hotkey for T, T as in Thomas. If you click on that T key, it'll actually activate that hotkey for you on demand so that instead of trying to do your drag and drop or your drag over an option and selecting the background, hitting T and then doing your drag will actually activate the select over geometry option. All right, and our last uh, update for the user experience is for those of you guys that have ever used Measure Tool in the past. So Measure Tool actually got some pretty cool updates this year. Uh, one of the greatest things I think that they introduced was this new pin option. So for those of you that have used Measure Tool in the past, you know that when you hit escape on accident, it actually kills your Measure Tool instance. And sometimes you're just trying to hit escape to exit a selection tool. So actually selecting the pin tool will prevent you from accidentally hitting that escape tool and getting out of your selections for your measurements. Additionally, because sometimes the numbers were difficult to read, what you can do now with the measure tool is actually increase the font size. So as I select a measurement, I can actually control how big that font is showing inside the measure di or dialog box so that it becomes readable. Anything that's copied in here No, nope, it's not going to do it for me today, but um, you, the, everything in here is still copyable. But you might see that this is, uh, there you go, 
as you select over a length number or any value, you'll actually be prompted for the copy paste uh, options. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about what's new in SolidWorks 2018. So for user experience, we talked a little bit about the welcome screen, the open progress indicator, so where it's, what's open, how long it's taking to open, and any uh, performance issues that are being uh, seen, the ability to change the top-level transparency of an assembly, the new color-coded folders, access to more mouse gestures, select over geometry using the T key or accessing it through the select uh, options, and then the new measure tool enhancements. So what's next? Well, with SolidWorks 2018, SolidWorks actually partnered with a CAM provider. So in SolidWorks 2018, you'll see that if you're on app active subscriptions, you actually have access to a two and a half access uh, CAM program powered by CAMWorks. So what is this thing? So SolidWorks CAM is a part and assembly machining software built to generate the CNC code or built to generate the code needed to run or operate a CNC machine. Um, with SolidWorks 2018, if you're on active subscription, you'll get access to the two and a half access milling and two access turning modules. What this allows you to do is to build the full tooling pass for your CAM machine or your CNC machines inside of SolidWorks, be able to simulate those tool paths and build your uh, CNC process through a library of components. So let's go ahead and take a look at SolidWorks and see what's going on here with that. If you upgrade SolidWorks 2017, you will need to modify the install to make sure you do include it as part of that installation. But by default, if you're installing SolidWorks 2018, you will automatically add this as long as you're on subscription. It is part of the add-ins features so you'll see SolidWorks CAM 2018 loaded as part of your SolidWorks add-ins. Turning this on will enable the add-in. And from here, all we have to do is open a part or an assembly that we want to perform the machining on. And in this case, I'll go ahead and grab my bearing here. And we'll start the CAM process for this bearing. So I have a bearing uh, pre-built up, pre-modeled for us, and if I want to generate the machine code for this, it's a fairly simple process. You'll see that there's a SolidWorks CAM add-in that's added at the top of my screen in my command manager. And there's also three additional icons that are inserted into the feature tree for us. The software is pretty intuitive, meaning we can just move from the left-hand side of the screen through the right-hand side of the screen in order to start to build the manufacturing process. For more in-depth use, there are tutorials or access to tech support in order to learn more about the SolidWorks CAM functionality. But in general, it's fairly simple. Define your machine. What machine is going to be actually be doing the operations that we're working on today? Extract all the features. So in some cases, we might not want to do the machinable features, but we'll actually do like uh, volume mills, so forth, so on. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll program this a little bit more uh, manually than allowing the software to do it all on its own. Generate the operation plans. Generate the tool pass. And then it's cool because we can actually jump in and see all the simulations. So if we jump in after we've gone through the machinable features, grabbing the operations plan, generating the tool pass, we can actually visualize this inside of SolidWorks and see how it's going to cut this model for us. So it'll go through with each of the different tools and show us a quick simulation of how it's going to add or remove material from these different components. And there we have it, the finished part. So there's a couple modifications we can make to the CAM profile so that we make sure we cut out the extra stock material on the edge of this component or use the lathe in order to uh, use circular stock, so forth and so on. There's different options in order to complete this manufacturing process. Part of the setup for this software does involve going in and setting up things like the stock manager or inside these machines, you can actually set up the different tools that you have available to your organization. You have the post processors that you can match to your specific CNC machine. And you can set up all the various parameters of your setup or of your machining processes. 
like I said, if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to us over here at Decide Solutions. We're happy to walk you through what's going on with this new SolidWorks CAM 2018. All right, so moving forward. So we're, what we're going to talk next about is sketching. So SOLIDWORKS 2018 did introduce a couple of new functionality, new features for sketching inside of SOLIDWORKS 2018. So first and foremost, we're going to see changes to 3D sketching. So for those of you that have done 3D sketching in the past, you know how difficult it can be to create uh, exact geometry, mirror geometry. So for a long time, we've always been able to do mirror geometry in 2D sketches. New for 2018, we can actually do it on 3D sketch geometry. Additionally, we can use reference planes as mirror planes for any mirror, whether it be uh, 2D, 3D, so forth, so on. So let's go ahead and jump into SOLIDWORKS and see what that looks like. So inside of SOLIDWORKS, I have an assembly pre-built for us with a couple of different sketch options. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab my support bar here, and we'll access this component as the part we're going to edit for our sketch. Now, inside my sketch, you'll notice that there are a couple of issues first and foremost. The first issue that I'd like to address is I have an arc over here that was predefined. Something happened within my SolarWorks instance when I saved it, when I converted it to version 2018, whatever it is, um, that actually flipped the arc on my lines. And what we're seeing now is that what I would it originally intended to have been a nice little arc between the first two lines that have been tangent, it's now flipped in the reverse section. It's very difficult to fix these things inside of SOLIDWORKS without breaking all the relationships, right? Without having to delete it and re-add it. New in SOLIDWORKS 2018, I can simply click on arcs that have the, the wrong tangency aspect and reverse them. So what you'll see is there's a new option under relationships for reverse and point tangent. What this will do is it'll actually flip that arc back up to its appropriate position without removing any of the references to the sketch geometry for me. Once I've repaired this sketch, I can actually perform a new operation in SOLIDWORKS 2018 using the mirror command, and the mirror command will actually work for my 3D geometry. So as we go in here and actually do a select, each of the components will start to be visualized on the opposing side of the plane, of the selected plane. So we'll make this a little easy and just go ahead and select everything there. By walking through each of these different options, we're easily able to fix the arc problems, and we're also able to mirror the entire sketch, the entire 3D sketch, about a plane. Now another critical enhancement that we've seen for SOLIDWORKS version 2018 is We'll go ahead and start this with a brand new fresh part. Each of us has seen before as we access a sketch when the plane rotates normal to our front screen. Now previously this only ever happened whenever the plane was not normal to the screen, right? When it was a brand new sketch that we we're going to access and create. As part of SOLIDWORKS version 2018, any pre-existing sketches will follow the same behavior as long as the option inside of your system options sketches and auto rotate view normal to sketch plane on sketch creation and sketch edit. So you'll see there's been a change in verbiage at the end of the option here for us and a change in functionality as far as how the software is behaving. So sketches now that are not normal to the screen upon edit will become normal to the screen and zoomed in. For sketching, additional improvements have been made for those of you guys that do have touch screens or stylus pens that work on your monitors. SOLIDWORKS actually introduced a new touch mode to SOLIDWORKS 2018 that can be used with 
touch, uh, touch screen monitors such as the Microsoft Surface. Additionally, if you have a stylus pen and you want to use it inside of Sketches, you'll notice that there's new options in a toolbar for Sketch Ink. What Sketch Ink will allow you to do is for touchscreen computers or pens, uh, stylus pen computers to be able to use those to drive uh, sketch geometry. The software will automatically convert any sketch geometry to, to sketch entities. So if you draw a nice uh, round curvature, a nice circle, it will actually try to do a full conversion of that circle into the circle tool or circle uh, sketch entity. All right, so let's step forward into our next category for today. SOLIDWORKS 2018 introduced some cool new functionality for drawings. This year, we'll primarily be talking about inserting 3D model views to drawings, adding advanced whole callouts created from parts, and then adding all uppercase for tables. So drawings have been updated for SOLIDWORKS version 2018 to allow us to use or repurpose 3D annotated views. So for those of you that are familiar with the SOLIDWORKS MBD functionality, creating SOLIDWORKS MBD views inside the 3D views tab are now reusable inside of the SOLIDWORKS drawings. SOLIDWORKS views, 3D views, can be accessed from the view palette for each of the different models that have those 3D views associated and will be inserted at the bottom of the model. What, those, what you'll see is they're actually annotated as a 3D view. So if we were to grab this 3D front view, we could drag and drop it into its position and any 3D view that had the information pre-inserted uh, pre onto it would pull over for us. It's very similar to how we used Dim Expert in the past. So importing the annotations, 3D view annotations, and then grabbing that 3D view pulled forward. We get all of the 3D uh, information, such as the geometric tolerancing and any dimensioning or critical dimensioning that was done in the 3D CAD model. For those of you that are familiar with the SOLIDWORKS Advanced Holes option that was introduced in version 2017, SOLIDWORKS has done a lot of work to improve the hole callout commands for those advanced holes. So this year, adding a hole callout in a drawing will place the hole callout for the advanced hole with all of the applicable holes. So for those of you that are, aren't as familiar with this process, inside the SOLIDWORKS part, what you'll see is it's an advanced hole option. The advanced hole is actually a series of holes that are drilled one on top of the other with different profiles. This was a new feature that was added as part of the version 2017 release. Now we can take all of these holes that we've stacked one on top of the other using both near side and far side uh, behaviors and insert the whole callout inside the sheet so we can see exactly how it's done. We do have control of how it's labeling these things, near side and far side, by simply toggling the reverse callout order and we're toggling the switch near side and far side messages. So if we want far side to be on the top or reverse the callouts. And then another great functionality as far as 2018 is concerned, is the ability to perform in all caps for tables or text. So previously, we all know that user has gone through before, and they do some stuff as all capitals, and some stuff with a little bit of caps and a little bit of lowercase. SOLIDWORKS 2018 introduces new functionality for going through and editing the table so that all caps are available all caps are present inside the assembly. So instead of having to go into each part and renaming each one of the different descriptions so that it's all capital, we can actually just toggle this option now and you'll see that your build materials and your content reflects that change.
the new tab and slot functionality. Tab and slot is a feature that was added as part of the 2018 release for Sheet Metal Tools. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start by using the new tab and slot function for creating tab and slots on our sheet metal assembly here for different pieces. So as a quick example, so you can see where we're going to be doing this exactly, I'll go ahead and explode this assembly. And you'll notice that my first sheet metal component is actually not attached to my second one. There's no tab or slot feature function here. What I'd like to do is use the new tab and slot function to add a tab on the top component and add the opposing slots into the bottom component to make sure that everything lines up nice and tightly. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and use the new, or I'm going to use the command inside my search bar for tab and slot. For those of you that don't know how to use this, there is an option to find any commands. So if we want to look for this specific command, we can click the eyeball and it will take us to the command inside the SOLIDWORKS options. So there's my new tab and slot feature. Using the tab and slot feature, it's fairly simple. I need to simply select the group, start on the first face where I want the tab to be created, and then select the end condition. Selecting the back side of the face here, we'll insert the tab and the slot so that way the tab is moving through the material and will actually cut a hole into the opposing material so that it can uh, capture the slot here for us. If I wanted to do two or three slots, just simply incrementing them, adding three slots, will push that forward so that the cuts are being made. I do have control over the shape of those slots, so adding in sharp edges, the camfered edges, or if we want filleted edges, we can control how those slots are working exactly. For my, or for my case today, we'll go ahead and use the camfered edge and leave the camfered edge at one millimeter there for us. Selecting the OK button, we'll cut the material and place the, the cut in there while adding the slot as well. Performing that same explode operation, we'll see exactly what happened with my new SOLIDWORKS 2018 tab and slot function. All right, I got a couple of hands raised that said we were losing uh, bandwidth here. Um, I apologize, guys. Uh, this webinar session is being recorded today. Um, I will make sure it does get distributed. I'm not sure how our marketing team is planning on it, but for everyone that attended today, I will grab the list and shoot you all a email with a link to the download for today's webinar session. So to continue though with our tab and slot functionality, this is usable multiple times within a model, also can be used within an assembly or weld knit bodies. So again, just to reiterate, it's a very simple tool to use. Simply access it from the commands bar, select the tab and slot function, merely need to select the edge where we want the tab to begin and the back surface where the tab ends. We'll go ahead and uh, de-increment this from 3 to 1, just because of the size of the edge that we're using for this tab here. And we'll see that it's actually previewing the tab insertion with the end condition. So we know exactly how long this tab is, what kind of camfered corner it's going to have, so far so on. So we want to shrink this one down to a very small tab. Go ahead and add multiples of them and turn off that offset. We'll see how it's going to add that, that tab and slot each information into there. As we hit OK, it simply does the cut and inserts the tab for us. Now, this still works for when we need to flatten different components. So if we grab a component and say flatten this one, those tab and slots will show up on our flat drawing there. So we now get the tabs pushed forward with the camfered corners and the camfered edges while still making it uh, functionally available for SOLIDWORKS CAM.
3D CAD models can now be used in the SOLIDWORKS inspection software through an add-in within the SOLIDWORKS software. Previously, this was only available in SOLIDWORKS drawings themselves, but you'll notice this here that you actually have access to using SOLIDWORKS inspection documents from the 3D MBD models or the 3D DIM expert models that you've generated. Any callouts or any dimensions that were created using DIM expert can then be imported using SOLIDWORKS inspection here for us through the new project insertion option. So what you'll see is we have a 3D CAD model with all of the appropriate dimensions for manufacturing purposes. What we can do is actually create an inspection document from this model. And what we'll do is import each of the critical dimensions based off of our preset information. So for different parts of the AS9102 form, we will also be able to grab properties such as the part name out of the uh, custom properties dialog box, the part number, and then step forward. Each of the dimensions that are selected on the left hand side of the tree will be inserted as part of the inspection document. So if we want to make sure we only included basic dimensions, we could check that and then only the couple basic dimensions that are part of this drawing would actually be inserted. Otherwise, making sure that to include everything here, we'll actually see that the software will go through and iterate each one of the different dimensions and apply a bubble to them so that it's being used as part of the inspection document. Each one of them will show up in the tree here for us so we can see where one is, what that value is, and what the upper and lower sound limits are. All right, I apologize, guys. Uh, it looks like it, it latent out again. Can you guys hear me right now? Okay. Uh, what this will allow us to do is it'll import each one of these ballooned objects, each one of these dimensions, into a uh, Excel report that can then be used for the inspection documentation. Additionally, creating these uh, balloons inside the 3D CAD space will allow us to export to 3D PDFs which will capture each of the dimensions with the ballooned objects in their appropriate position. So let's go ahead and perform those operations very quickly here for us. Go ahead and save this one just to my desktop for us. And we'll do the same thing, export the Excel document here. It'll just take a couple quick seconds as it goes through, calculates all the information and builds those geometries for us or builds those models for us. Now for those 3D CAD models or for those uh, uh, PDF files, those 3D PDF files, they do need to be opened up inside of Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader in order to actually see the CAD models. So as we open these up, it does have to be turned on, but what you'll get is access to each of the 3D views, and they'll show up here in the view space in just a second once it's done loading. Additionally, we should see the Excel document here generated using the AS9102 default form, and what it'll do is populate each of the individual uh, columns with the appropriate information. So as the balloon number, the specification, and then the upper and lower limits for the values here. So we actually get the full GD&T callout for the true position, plus we get the upper limit and lower limit information. Same thing on some of these other ones where we get the diameter symbol letting us know that we're actually measuring a 7 millimeter diameter and then it will specify the upper and lower limit based off of the tolerance values. Each of these tolerance values was specified as part of the new project creation tool. So at the very end of the tool, there was an option to default each one of the standards that was not pushed into the software preemptively. So if our software or if our model or dimensions did not include upper or lower tolerances, it was using this tolerance table, essentially our title block table, to drive what those tolerance values look like. Uh, 
All right, so, oops, wrong side. All right, so to proceed forward, we're going to go ahead and start.